Many hackers have sets of tools that they use to gain access into areas that they aren't allowed. So as a way of raising awareness to some of the ways that hackers can get into different systems, we're going to take a peek into the hacker's backpack coming up next on Today in Tech. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Today in Tech. I am Keith Shaw. Joining me in studio is Itai Mayor. He is an adjunct professor of cybersecurity at Boston College and an industry-recognized cybersecurity researcher. Uh, you've been on the show before. Welcome back. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Uh, one of the things that we talked about the last time you were here was, was ChatGPT and how, how that is being used um, by both uh, security researchers and uh, the hacker community. Uh, but one of the things that you brought up to me was that you have this thing called the hacker's backpack. And we're going to show you real quick. This is, this is your, your hacker backpack. It is. Um, <laughs> And you use this in your, your course at, at BC, correct? Correct. Yeah. So how do you, how did, how did this sort of whole thing come about in terms of use, of showing your students these, these tools? Right. So during the course, we discuss all kinds of ways to attack, uh, in order to better defend. Yeah. And I actually had students ask me about, Hey, we heard about this thing called, uh, it all started from the pineapple. Okay. Uh, Wi Fi. Um, can you show us that? Can you, can we talk about it? And I actually had this, this device at hand and I started playing around and showing them how it can be used both, both as uh, an aggressive tool to take over sessions, but mm -hmm. also as a reconnaissance tool. And from there, it grew to a whole plethora of devices that uh, are now actually a whole session by itself. Right. And so we're going to go through a list of, of, of a bunch of different things you've got here on the table. I don't know if, if people can see that here. We've got a whole bunch of gear uh, and a lot of it's hardware, but then there are some software sort of tricks as well. Uh, just to just to sort of be as a warning for people out there, we're not going to show you how to do anything, any of this. But uh, in addition, uh, a lot of this stuff you can just find out by Googling things, right? So we're not really revealing any sort of secret tips or tricks or anything like that, right? Yeah. I mean, today there's resources, YouTube, even TikTok, Google these things. Um, and by the way, talking about AI, you can even ask Chad GPT <laughs> about how to utilize these tools. We have to keep in mind a lot of these tools, uh, almost all of them, except maybe one, are designed to be penetration testing tools to get better security for companies. Right. Unfortunately, it's really easy to take a weapon and point it somewhere else, so it, it just can become as right. So, tool. so now, obviously, too, when you when you're bringing up these tools in the class and discussing that, you 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 really do talk about the ethical situations of doing this because you are telling your students, hey, try this out and try to do different things with it, but you're also telling them not to become cyber criminals, right? Right. Yeah. They, they, there's there's you have to know the laws of where you're going, right? Different countries, different states may have different laws. Everything from like port scanning to uh, you, you know creating a fake Wi-Fi network. You, you have to know what you're doing and yes they're not allowed to of course to break the law and do anything illegal okay uh just so that we get that out of the way where you know so that we're, we're don't not, don't do bad don't stuff. do this at home <laughs> basically uh all right so first off uh we've got the pineapple wi-fi why don't you show kind of what you've got what what it is and then sort of how it can be used in both like you said aggressive and sort of reconnaissance or passive mode sure so um actually the pineapple i started using about 10 years ago i believe uh this was uh, one of the uh, earlier models um i think this was the first model that i had uh no sorry this is actually the the new one this is the old one i okay. apologize this is the old one very old uh, i remember when i got it started playing around with it um this is the f one of the first versions there have been others since this is a smaller version you can see that I outfitted it here with directional antennas. Okay. Um, kind of broke this one, but it still works. Yep. Very small uh, compared to the other one. And this is a, this is called the Pineapple Tetra, which is a little bit bigger. The antennas are a little bit wonky on this, but... And this is the, the latest one. Okay. Uh, the Mark 7, I believe. Um, and so what the Pineapple essentially allows you to do is... Um, all kinds of Wi-Fi attacks. Uh, the most obvious one is you take a device like this, which is essentially a beefed up router, and um, create a fake network, right? You can go into a Starbucks, for example, create a network called free guest Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, people will connect to it. Now, once they're connected, you can see anything that they're doing, and lo as long as it's not encrypted. Um, you can redirect them to phishing pages. You can do all, basically a captive portal. You can do whatever you want. Would you hook this up to sort of your notebook then? And if you were going to, you're going to go into a coffee shop and you would hook that up to your network. You don't have to then actually break into the, the, the Starbucks and, and replace their router with this router, right? Exactly. This you is more of a scanning device, right? Yeah, you'll plug it into a device or you potentially just hide it in a corner and you can control it wirelessly. You can use 
actually you can create a, a, an access point on it and control it remotely. Right. Um, and and so yeah, you can create an, a fake network. But what's really interesting is when you start to understand how these devices that we use on a daily basis actually work. For example, your phone. Mm -hmm. When you go home or to work, how does it automatically connect to the Wi-Fi network? What it actually does is not what most people think. It doesn't search for a Wi-Fi and connect to it. It actually broadcasts all the network names it has ever connected to, and when one of them replies, it connect to it. Right. So right. it's really easy to, using a device like the Pineapples, you know, listen to all the devices and hear all the networks they're trying to connect to. Oh, you're looking for, um, uh, I, I don't know, uh, a McDonald's, you're in a, in a Starbucks, for your a McDonald's Wi-Fi because you've once connected to it. Right. I'm Wi-Fi McDonald's, and now you take control of that connection. Not only that, you can actually force people to disconnect from their current connection. It's called a deauth attack. And then they're forced to connect to you. Or they reconnect to you, but you, but it's now your fake one. Exactly. Yeah. So those are the more aggressive ones, but uh -huh. you can also use it as a reconnaissance tool because of that feature, so to speak, of devices that actually broadcast all the network names. You can actually use the pineapple and just listen to what people are freely broadcasting, maybe unknowingly. And it's really interesting once you take that and Com uh, combine that with an open source tool like Wiggle. And I think we have some Yeah, you've got an example of this, right? Uh, yeah. With the, yeah, go ahead and explain sort of the, the Wiggle thing. So if we look at the slides, um, you'll see that uh, Wiggle is a, is, an, um, is a website that you can use online. Um, I'll just describe it for now. It's a website that you can use uh, online and, and it can actually identify the the actual locations of uh, wireless networks. So people go around scanning for networks. If we go up, 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 yeah, up, go up, slides, go up a few more to, slides. To, yeah, go up, up, up keep more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Go, 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 and that's it. Okay, okay so, so that's you, the pineapple. That's yep. the pineapple. So what you see here is that... Um, the next slide. Next slide. Uh, what I did here is I scanned um, a group of people. Um, this was agreed upon. And, uh, okay. <laughs> and um, immediately I noticed one device that was of interest. If you click on it, we'll see through like the, the next animation. Slide. Uh, um, yep. yep. So this is one device, right? It all has the same network card. And if you look at the network names that this device is trying to connect to, if you click again, you'll see you can immediately see all kinds of information. Like this person is a Sheraton uh, frequent visitor, you, flies United and British Airways because his device is telling me that that's what they connect right. to. Right. And that's not that. And that's not. I mean, that's it's cool but not really, yeah. really cool. We'll, we'll keep going, keep going. Yeah, if we see uh, what uh, the next slide is, I identified that there are several um, wireless networks that were of interest. Actually, not the first one, but the, the other three. Yeah, Gray Lady, Wi-Fi, White Elephant, and Jared Coffin. Yeah, very weird wireless yeah. names, right? Yeah. So what I did then is I went on to Wiggle, which is this website that you can just type in the wireless network name. Yep. And if it has been scanned, you can see where it is physically. So if we take a look, you'll see that uh, I looked for... Uh, um, so this first one was the... Uh, I think this was the... Uh, um, Gray Lady or no? No, no, no. This was the um, uh, uh, Jared Coffin or the... Uh, Jared Coffin. Oh, no, the White Elephant. White Elephant. Okay. Yeah, that's the first one. And it's you can see here that it's uh, in... It's uh, on Nantucket. Nantucket. So just Google it and you'll see in the next slide that it's actually a pretty nice hotel. We go to the next one. Uh, Jared Coffin, right? And yep. again, same location. Same location. And nice hotel, where you can see in the next slide. And then there's uh, Gray Lady. And when I search for it, it's it's actually... Uh, it comes cape, up on the cape. Cape. Yep. Uh, Google it, and you'll find out that it's actually... Probably That's the, the, the ferry. The between. ferry that they take yeah. over there. By the way, there is open source tools to actually follow the ferry. You can see on the next slide that you can actually follow it around and see where it is uh, at, at any time. So you take a device like this and use it uh, like a pineapple and use it just as a reconnaissance tool, yep. there's so much you can tell about. People find out where they live, where they go to, habits, stuff like that. Right. So what, what was interesting is that before we started recording this, you took you took us some stuff off of my phone. Like I, I showed you all of the, the Wi-Fi networks that, that this phone had connected to. And not even this particular phone, but this was all of like, because again, when you transfer phones from an old iPhone to a new Copy. one, it... it it takes all of that data over. Like I had old Wi-Fi networks that I that I don't even use anymore, and and there were listings of of old places I used to work. Um, but you could, if you were scanning, if I was in, if I was in the same Starbucks as you, and and you could see all of this, you could start typing in some of these unique names, and you could narrow it down. You would basically be able to figure out where I live, or at least where this person. Or use it right? for social engineering. You mentioned one place that you don't know no longer work at, right? I can, hey, uh, this is James from, you might not remember him, the IT guy from wherever. Yeah. You know, start a social engineering. Yeah. It gives you, it gives the attacker a lot of information that, you know, maybe they shouldn't have. Well, that's the interesting part too, is that, that 
you you were telling me that if you're naming a Wi-Fi network, you should name it the most generic Wi-Fi network uh, imaginable, which is counterintuitive because when we tell people about passwords, we say give it give it a unique password that no one else can guess or anything like that. But for a Wi-Fi network, you should make it as generic as possible. And the reason why is because of this whole wiggle thing, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, think about it. Like, how many network names are there out are, are there are there? that's called home or, right. or my internet? However, if you name your network name uh, my home at blah, 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 and a number and an exclamation mark, you're unique, which makes you stand out, which makes it very easy to identify where you are. Right. So, um, yeah, the but more... There, but you shouldn't leave it as the default either, like Netgear or anything like that, because no, no, there are um, hacking things that... That they there are backdoors into those types of things, so you should rename it, but just rename it like house or home. Yeah, some, something yeah. like that. Yeah, definitely. Always, always take care of the default settings. Change the password yeah. of the default settings, of course. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah. Um, so that's that's with the uh, pineapple. Of course, there's a lot of other things you can do with it. There's a lot of stuff you can install on it. But on the basic level, that's what it is. One thing that I mentioned as part of it um, is something called deauth, right? Yep, Which yep. is a, an attack where you can disconnect everybody. And there's actually a tool that can do just that. This is a thing is like a twenty five dollar tool. Yeah. Do you have a slide on this one that shows that one too? Yeah, is actually that, yeah, we do. So that's the uh, that's the deauth. Uh, deauther. And what it basically does is it scans for network, and you can just sort of DDoS it. You can just overload it and take it down. Okay. And I can say, oh, well, who cares if you take down a, a, a you know, a the Starbucks, <laughs> The Starbucks Wi-Fi or the McDonald's one. Yeah, it's not really malicious. Well, yeah. you have to start thinking about how do we use Wi-Fi. For example, I can tell you from my home, uh, I use, without naming the specific company, I use a security tool uh, and it's all wireless. So I actually took this device and with my phone, I looked at the camera uh, that it's, uh, that my home security camera, I Started the attack, the camera paused, just like, you know, the, um, the, the Hollywood disappearing from the elevator trick where somebody walks by. <laughs> exact, exact same thing. But I beat a $1,000 security system with a $25 gadget that I got from Amazon. So that's one thing. So, so let's say, all right, let, I'm going to get another example. So let's say I'm, I'm, I'm in my house and, um, the neighbors next door are having a really loud party and, you know, and they're playing music off of their, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything like that. Like I could then go in and basically shut down their Wi-Fi because I would, I would know it because of the pineapple. Yeah, and then I could shut it down with the deauth. Yeah, uh, not, by that, the, not that I would ever do that to my neighbors. And don't do it. It's yeah. uh, it. Well, it's maybe as illegal as playing loud music at certain times. <laughs> but uh, yeah, by the way, you don't have to know their name, their network name. for ill scan. Maybe you can find it, but yeah. if not, you can do kind of like a broad spectrum kind of attack and just go go wild on anything. Um, I do have another example. How, how would you use that in a in sort of a good way, penetration testing way, or anything like that? Could could it be used for quote unquote good? So potentially, you could use this to test like your routers if they are uh, 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 immune to you know these flooding attacks and making sure that nobody or, can or even just scanning to see if if someone has set up an illegal router in your in your company or if you know you can use like this that. you can use a pineapple for yeah. stuff like this and of course you know some more advanced capabilities are probably more in the um, uh, government re uh, 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 area of things for those who thought of using this maliciously could potentially try uh, and identify where you're doing this from. So again, don't do stuff like yeah. this illegal. Uh, is it legal for you to sort of own this? Like yeah. it, it, okay. It so is. These uh, are not illegal devices by any means. All these devices are, even the ones that are really malicious that will show towards the end are okay. all legal. Okay. Um, I actually went, I had an incident where my, my, my daughter and I uh, went ice skating and she fell and hurt her arm and I told her it's nothing uh, but she wanted to hear it from somebody else before wa <laughs> by waiting four hours before that so we went yeah. to a, a local hospital oh, here okay uh, we go into the x-ray room and she's like daddy stay with me and being the good father that I am I said no nope, nope. I told you that's nothing, that's nothing I'm gonna wait outside <laughs> I go outside and as the good father that I am caring for my daughter what do I do I scan for wireless networks <laughs> and I have a, a slide here. You can see that uh, I, I looked into wireless networks at the hospital and one of them came up as DXD100. Yeah, A54. Yeah, yeah, that one. No idea what that is. Google it. It's one of their MRI machines, <sighs> mobile MRI machines. Now, potentially at that point, if you want to cause a mass in a hospital, you just start attacking it and take, take down that wireless connection. Again, don't do it. It's illegal. I'm just saying we're using, a, we're taking for granted a lot of the devices around us without maybe perhaps understanding some of their vulnerabilities and how easily they can be attacked, not by sophisticated. How tools. could, how could the hospital sort of, pre, you know, prepare for 
could it just say not to broadcast it or change like how do how do first and foremost what's the hospital what does the hospital do so that it can't be found First, first of all, don't name the, the wireless network on the device. Don't tell me what it is just by, oh, by right. me okay. identifying the wireless yep. network. It's, you know, it's like at home, you set up uh, your security system and you say, name that wireless security system. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> I would start with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So uh, the next thing you want to show us are some USB devices that yeah. um, you have. Um, do you want to go through? Yeah. Obviously, show me a regular USB device. Right? So just this, like is, that. this is a regular USB dongle that everybody yep. uses. If I take this apart and if we look inside, um, you'll see that this is just, there's like nothing in here. There's a memory yep. right, and a control chip. Yep. This is what a normal device looks like. Uh, what we have here is something that I think some people may know called a, in, the, in the original packaging from Hack 5. <laughs> um, Called a rubber ducky, okay. which looks right. It looks exactly looks exactly, the, like exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. But if you open it up, you'll see that what it is is actually it's actually more like a computer, right? There's a con like a CPU control chip, yep. and this is sort of like the hard drive. You yep. See the memory built in. What this device does once you plug it into a computer, it's like giving hands on keyboard to the attacker because you put a script on here, and you can tell the computer, okay, connect to my command and control center or download something to this computer, whatever it is. And unfortunately, these are very easy to use, right? Once you program it, and by the way, I asked, um, again, going back to AI, I asked ChatGPT to write me scripts for this, and it did, Oof. which is really was really nice of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so you don't even have to know, to know the syntax. You just tell, do something like this, and it, it knows the syntax for it. And... Um, I mean, people can use it for all kinds of attacks. And so what they're doing is they're, they're combining this with social engineering uh, uh, attacks. Like, so they're taking devices like this and they're just kind of leaving them out in a parking lot or, or, you know, some very famous. I've incidents. seen some, I've seen some things in, in offices where people will go to like a trade show and they'll, they'll get all of these, these USB sticks that have, you know, photos and press releases and things like that. And then once we, we were done using them, we would just kind of pass them out to the people at work, but you could just sort of throw that one in there too. And as they're plugging it in, boom, now you've yeah. got access to their, like, do you think that a lot of employees have, I mean, a lot of employees have been sort of trained on that. Like, don't, don't touch anything that's not yours type of a thing. But is that still happening out there? Like, you think that that type of a trick can still can still work? Just take a sharpie and write on the USB <laughs> salaries or private <laughs> pictures, and ah, there you go. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I think these things can still work. Again, these are not like the common things that you see, like phishing and malware, because they all require proximity to the target and and some interaction with the target, which is a little bit more risky for the attacker. Yeah. But people should be aware of it. Um, if we move from from the from the rubber ducky to something very similar, is is this USB cable? Mm -hmm. It looks. I should probably mark it with red, not with blue. Um, so that is, you know it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's bad right now. It's blue. It looks okay. Um, so this is essentially the same thing, but in a cable. So actually, all the bad stuff is in here. Once okay. you plug it into a computer, I can send a Bluetooth signal and make it run a bad script that's in here. Yeah, which. Again, it goes to, you know, when you're in an airport and you're charging your phone in a free charging station, do you know what the uh, end of the cable is connected to? Be right. careful with that. You know, even the NSA at RSA, not this year, I think it was last year, in their booth uh, had like this charging station that said, connect, what could go wrong? Something, I'm, oh, man. I'm paraphrasing, yeah, right. but. Yeah, I, and I believe a couple months ago, the FBI put out an alert to consumers that says, do not charge your, your phone at these free uh, stations because they must have discovered that that people were putting in bad things into the into the cables or into the these actual stations, right? Yeah. Again, we take these things for granted. It's part of our everyday life. They, oh yeah, free Wi-Fi or oh uh, free electricity charging. I just yeah. need it right now. We have to make take a second and think about it. And you know, you mentioned before the USB, right? Somebody drops it in the parking lot. Somebody drops it in an office and plug it in. You have to be careful because. There are even worse types of USBs. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, then we went from sort of the the benign. I don't want to say benign, but <laughs> common to now. This is you keep this in a case for for a particular reason. Yeah. Right? This is like you know in the movies when you see the the crazy animal, the crazy person come <laughs> rolling in in the <laughs> in the cage. Okay. So what is this one called? This is called the uh, USB killer. Okay. Oh, and, wow. Okay. Um, I think we also have some slides around this. It has been used in the past. Um, in, in some attacks. Yeah, this is actually the newer version. Okay. But you can see here, if we do one more click, um, some headlines of people who have actually used it to destroy equipment. So what this device is, 
Uh, once you plug it into a device, it fries it. Um, I mean, if you keep it plugged in for too long and you can find YouTube movies, uh, videos of people who did this, it will actually, you'll see fire actually coming out of your device. It shoots the electricity back into, uh, the, the device you're plugging it in and fries it. Now, okay. Now we're going to, you're going to sort of demonstrate it, but not. Really, because it's not a real computer. Well, or, it is a, a real, real computer, computer, but you're not actually frying it. Yeah, so I'm using this protective shield yep. uh, to make sure that I don't kill this little uh, computer. Okay. Um, hopefully, I'm not going to electrocute myself. If it is, eh, better rating. We'll uh, edit it out in then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm plugging it in. Now, as soon as it's plugged in, it's you can see the red light. Yep. At this point, the computer would have been fried. The motherboard okay. would have been fried. It doesn't... Because you've got the... But, but because you've got the shield on it right now. Yes. Yeah. So it's protecting... Um, it doesn't, for example, I wouldn't use it as something to delete all the files, right? It's not something to d dispose of information, but it will fry the motherboard. Now, let me show you here. I'm going to touch these two wires together. Just be careful. Uh, yeah, they're already touching me. I shouldn't touch both of them at the same time. It's a little bit tricky. How about, can you give me a hand? Just hold the computer here. Yeah, okay. that's it. I hope we can see up. Okay. So if I touch these. Oh, uh -huh. boy. There we go. These two wires together. Where are they? It's hard to see with the black background. There, there you go. go. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's what it's trying to do. It's yeah. trying to fry this device. And if we actually take a look at what it looks like on the inside, and I'll try to do it without... Yeah. Um, I'll open this up just to show you the difference because we've seen the other ones. And this is one of those things where people could just search for this online and they don't have to go to the dark web or anything like that. They just Google Kill it. KillerUSB.com, wow. if I remember correctly. Wow. Just capacitors, right? So yeah. it takes the electricity, stores it, and then gives it back in an order of magnitude more. Uh, so it fries uh, the device. Um, can be used for a lot of really bad stuff. I can't think, before you even ask me the question, I can't think of any legitimate use of this device other than destruction and bad stuff. Well, I mean, if you if you had a computer that you, instead of wiping the hard drive, you just wanted to get rid of it completely, maybe mm -hmm. use it, but no, it does feel like... Uh, go, go recycle it. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, uh, you want to show the thing called the Flipper, right? Now, this is this is a, a, an interesting little device, too. Yeah, so this is the... Uh, got really popular in the last couple of months, the Flipper Zero. Uh, started off as a, um, a Kickstarter campaign, if I remember correctly. Okay. And really, really cool hacking uh, uh, device. Can do some of the stuff that the pineapple can do, can do some of the stuff that the bad USB does. What's really fun with it is this whole uh, NFC portion of it, right? The near field communication mm -hmm. where essentially what you can do is you can use it like um, to read cards or signals or to read the actual card reader and read the information off of it as you well. You got a slide on this too, Chris, yeah. right? We should have a slide. Yep. So that's that's a flipper zero. Now, when I gave it to my students, one of them actually to test it uh, went to a Tesla dealership and asked them, "Hey, can I can I try and open the charging port on on a Tesla here?" And they said, "Yeah, go to the corner. There's one right there in the corner. I try it on it, and you'll see the results in in the slide that he opened. Uh, if we go one back, he opened. Uh, oh, go back. Uh, going back. So that was what he was gonna. That was what it was going for. But yep. this thing, it does have a range. He ended up opening all the Teslas in the whole area, and you can see all of the charging charging port, uh, 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 ports on these Teslas were, were open. Um, I think there's a lot of TikTok videos around that, like the whole Tesla stuff, uh, but it can be used for, you know, credit cards, key hotels, yep. hotel keys, sorry. Yep. Um, yep. And you, uh, you have another video yeah. on, on that we want to show that this was, this was recently, right? Like, yeah, this was uh, in a visit okay. that I recently so did in the my, UK. Uh, not so, well um, so here I'm in my room and I'm going to leave the audio. My, okay. Key card. This, where is it? This is a flipper zero. Let's put it on NFC mode. Okay, it is on NFC mode. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, okay. And now we're gonna do a read. Uh, read the card. Got it. So it read the card, emulated it. That was pretty quick, door. too. Yeah. Now I'm gonna take the card with me just in case. Think about bumping to somebody's this. wallet and stealing that. Really I've read a couple of stories of, of people doing that in bars and they're grabbing uh, stuff from the iPhones. Yeah. Because yeah. like Apple Pay, I think, is something is that they can it? grab. All right, so you're in the hallway now. And now I'm just... Now you're enabling it, right? Yeah, yeah so I'm doing the emulation of yeah. the key. Just do it now. Wow, okay. 
Yeah. So that. So that, as a hotel guest, I should basically deadbolt everything when I'm in the room. I do then, it anyway <laughs> because anyway, I, yeah. I don't like room service <laughs> <laughs> coming in at all kinds of uh, times. But yeah. And again, now we have to think about all the devices that we're using, which are NFCs, which include a lot of different things. Um, and again, this is a penetration testing tool, but you know, there was a researcher who hooked this up. You can see here, it has some interesting capabilities, hooked it up with external de devices, was able to change traffic lights with this. Uh, when I saw it, I was shocked, but maybe I shouldn't be. Um, can be used for a lot of different things. Now, so you you present this in your in your classrooms, and and you tell them, you know, so you you show them the tools, and you you give them access to the tools as well. I I, I actually force them to use the tools, them I, use I, it, but, I, and then you you ask them to go do. Th things that maybe you haven't thought of, right? Or as long as within the reason of legality. Uh, yeah. I try to have them think out of the box, like surprise me, show me something I didn't think of doing or it either a new functionality or a new use of the functionality that you currently have with this. And they come up with the, like all kinds of interesting stuff. It helps like not just start to, you know, get your mind going around how do I figure out something that I've never seen before, but they actually find out all kinds of stuff. Then, then they're thinking, okay, how do I protect the company or the organization I work for from from stuff right, like this? Right, right. So, like, because because when you came in, we we have a, a key system here. I'm gonna pull out my. So we have like a, a, a. This is my little key fob to get in, and we tried it on that, and it didn't work. But that's a great but example. That's a good, that, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, that, that's a great example of 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 what I would do. Okay, so it doesn't work, but I know it can do it. So okay, I need to figure out there's software I can download, uh, put on here that will be able to read that card. If you knew, if you knew the name of the the, right. the company, or you could figure out what that was. I'll I'll, I'll start googling. Yeah. I can probably figure out that the uh, the manufacturer or the type of protocol that it uses, and then download it here and and play around with it. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And when I say you know think out of the box and challenge yourself to do stuff like that. I don't know if, if you wanted me to talk about this or not, but <laughs> the, 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 the door itself also mm -hmm. stores that, or is that some, what you don't? Know? So as some we've actually, as we've seen here yeah. as well, some doors will store some of the keys that were used. So we tried it here. I tried to read the, your yeah. card off the reader here, which didn't work. Some doors I've tried in the past did store the last 10 keys and those. So potentially if somebody used the master key, you can read it off of there and use it. Yeah. So uh, you could say, and, and, and is the master key something like, you figured out at the hotel that they don't have they don't have individual keys for each room. They have a master key that can open all the doors, yeah. and you could figure out a way. If you could f get one of those, then you could use that, and then boom, you have a master key for every room. Yeah. So again, uh, deadlock your uh, deadbolt. Your, uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to stay in a hotel uh, at this point. <laughs> Just sit there in the other. But again, it, 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 if someone wanted to break into my room. Again, you could just put the orange hat on in the vest and sort of use social engineering type, types of skills to, to yeah, sort of get in. Yeah, I mean, we have more devices here like the yeah. Hacker 1RF. We can use radio frequencies and all kinds of interesting stuff to attack cars and everything. But ultimately, I completely agree with you. You know, um, hard hat, orange vest, some confidence. And unfortunately, you can probably get into places you shouldn't go. All right. And so like, do, do the students in your class, they enjoy sort of this class and they look forward to it and. Yeah, they, they really, they, the two things they mostly look forward to is the, um, uh, hack open source intelligence and hacking with Google hacks and stuff like this. Yeah. And these devices. Um, some of them, by the way, some of these devices, like I think the flipper is now not being sold on Amazon because it can be used for bad stuff. Okay. And the prices were really jacked up recently. Um, so they're very excited to have, you know, stuff like this and, and be able to. Yeah. Like how affordable are all of these things? So, um, uh, for example, the, uh, the author is like $20, 25 This is probably the most expensive, the hacker one, because I also have an extra ad on the screen on it. This was about 250 plus 250. Uh, the flipper, when I bought it, was $170. I heard it's going for close to 400. Uh, the Wi Fi, the pineapples are about $100, uh, roughly. The bad USBs, rubber duckies is about $30, $40. All reachable through legitimate stores hack five ajk5 sell most of these or you can find them on on amazon oh wow and and again these are also being used by governments and oh, or, yeah. or the government stuff is probably even more advanced than than, than we have if you, if you did have advice for anybody out there watching sort of like i think we would we'd be like rename your your wi-fi network <laughs> to something generic right but yeah. also make sure it's not the default 
uh, what other what other advice can don't fall for the USB in the parking lot type of a thing? Yeah, I would say some some systems, although although it's not as as convenient. Like I'm rethinking of uh, taking my security system at home and just have it wired and not connected to the wireless, just so it's not it it will be it can susceptible to other attacks, right? But not to this stuff. And and by the way, there's been um, reports about attacks in this area where we live uh, of people actually jamming. Uh, cameras, all kinds of door cams. Yeah, that's what I, that, that that was the first thing I thought of too. Is that we just set up a, a door cam for our our driveway, and that connects to our Wi-Fi network. It was you know relatively easy to set up, yeah. um, but you could you could use something like this to jam it or just watch what we're watching or uh, more more jam it if you want to yeah. watch it if it's connected to the internet and not properly secure. You can use tools like you know Shodan to identify and try to find this device. And, yeah. That's um, why I also don't have any cameras inside the house to watch anything in the inside, like because yeah, I don't want anybody coming to see that. But that I've stuff. read reports in Facebook groups in this area that that there were some people got their their cameras jammed. There was somebody outside walking, and he was sitting by the the house and jammed some of these systems. So again, uh, maybe maybe go wired for some of these okay. uh, devices. And uh, regarding uh, uh, wireless networks, you know, it's really up to you if you want to broadcast or not. All your 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 uh, Wi-Fi just. Just be a little bit more, I guess, the, in, in general, be more vigilant. You know, don't connect to that USB port just because it's free in the airport. You know, right. don't connect to that Wi-Fi without, you know, proper encryption or if you're not familiar Right, have with a it. VPN on your on your phone and your, your computer for any sort of data transmission. Anything that's not in, in, in your house where yeah. you're outside and you're not sure about it. Yeah. All right, Itai, thanks again for coming in. This is uh, fascinating stuff. I'm sure we'll have you back for all sorts of other security things. I'll come back probably. I'll try to f get that fun and, and get myself try. in here. <laughs> well, one of the things, like you, you were talking about the, the car stuff too. Yeah. I've got a car that, that can unlock the doors. And um, I was going to have you come out to the parking lot and try it with mine. But then you said, well, wait, that might not be a good idea. <laughs> Tell that story real quick. And then we'll. So, yeah, I, I use this device, the uh, uh, Hacker RF. You can capture actually the uh, signal between the key and the car. And uh, let's say, somebody clicks to open it, you can capture it. And yeah. then when they're gone and they lock the door, you can replay that and open the car. I did that on my car, worked first time. Second time I did it, cars today, most of them have smart uh, systems where they know, oh, somebody's using the previous, because they jump frequencies. Somebody's mm -hmm. using the previous frequency, I'm being attacked. And uh, my car actually completely shut down for 30 minutes. You couldn't do anything with it because it figured it's under an attack. So... The next time I have you in, I'll, I'll drive in with my older car, which because that was a 2010. I probably wasn't around. Well, that probably wasn't around in 2010. Maybe it was. Well, I don't know. I can, I can wait for 30 minutes, I guess. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks again. No problem. All right. That's all the time we have for today's episode. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and add any comments that you have in the space below. Join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.